Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. As the president travels to Argentina, the U.S. Senate is hitting back against Saudi Arabia. I'm Tom Hansen, and I'll tell you what's being done over the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Tribal, tribal plans to rescue some bison from Yellowstone National Park are again being thwarted. Coming up, what state officials are saying about that holdup. Good morning, uh, 6 uh, 29 now on uh, this uh, Thursday. Uh, Chet Lehman, Missy O'Malley with you. Matt has our forecast in a moment. Meantime, our top story this morning. The head of the United Nations calls the war in Yemen the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Yesterday, the Senate advanced a resolution that would pull the U.S. out of the Saudi-led war. As CBS's Tom Hansen reports from New York, the bipartisan vote was also punishment for Saudi Arabia's role in the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. If not... The yeas are 63, the nays are 37. The Senate advanced a resolution yesterday to end military support of Saudi Arabia's involvement in the war with Yemen. If the president won't send the message, we have to, that you cannot murder a journalist in a console, especially one who's a U.S. citizen. The vote was in part to punish Saudi Arabia for the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The CIA's assessment is that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman gave the order to kill him. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. President Trump has been reluctant to accept those findings. There is no direct reporting connecting the Crown Prince to the order to murder Jamal Khashoggi. Before the vote, the secretaries of state and defense both echoed the uncertainty to senators in a closed door briefing. We have no smoking gun that the Crown Prince was involved. Missing from the briefing was CIA Director Gina Haspel, the one official who's heard a recording of Khashoggi's murder provided by Turkey. Like most in the room was disappointed that uh, Gina Haspel was not there. Gina Haspel, if all of the accounts are true, would have said with a high degree of confidence that in fact the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia was involved. Uh, in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. It's unclear why she didn't attend, but a CIA spokesman noted that Haspel previously briefed a Senate committee. Tom Hansen, CBS News. Now, President Trump heads to Argentina today for the G20 summit. Already there is the crown prince, though there are no plans to have the two leaders to have a formal meeting. Well, President Trump is scheduled to meet with lots of world leaders over the next couple of days, so That's we'll right see now. how all of that goes. We will have uh, reports coming up on the CBS Evening News. Right now, Matt uh, steps in to join us. It looks like a, still a bit of a power issue over for our friends in the mining uh, city this morning. That's for sure. Uh, keep in mind, there are some folks without power. So uh, if you have some elderly that uh, live out there, you may check, check in on, on them. them. Good yeah. idea. Uh, here's a look at our temperatures this morning into the teens in Butte. 13 degrees, our temperature there. 20s for the vast majority of the area. We do have some cloud cover out there, and that's keeping the temperatures up a few degrees. A daytime highs expected to be into the mid to upper 30s for today. Mainly dry conditions, at least for now, as we head into Friday evening. We do have some snow on tap. We'll talk about the timing of that coming up in just a few minutes. 632 now the election is over and now it's actually official. Uh, yesterday's state elections board quickly certified Montana's November 6th election results. But on election day, tabulating the votes in Montana was anything but quick, running into the next day in many counties. And MDN's Mike Dennison asked elected officials why counting votes took so long and what could be done to avoid this in the future. On Wednesday morning after Montana's November 6th election, more than 100,000 votes had yet to be counted and reported statewide, close to one-fifth of the entire number of votes cast. Is this the new normal for Montana elections, with scores of races not called until well into the next day? Secretary of State Corey Stapleton, the state's top election official, says he hopes not. I think that Montana ought to strive for having the results done, finished, at least mostly completed on Tuesday night. In Montana, elections are run by the counties, which have their own vote counting machines, methods, and schedules. County election officials say many factors cause delays in tabulating votes. Tens of thousands of absentee ballots must be opened, unfolded, and counted in a compressed time period. And in some counties, scores of people show up on election day to register and vote, or get new ballots, which means more work for election office staff. In Gallatin County, for instance, people were still registering and voting until 11 p.m. on election day. County election officials say one big help would be to allow earlier counting of absentee ballots, which now, under state law, can't start until election day. 
if we could start counting those absentee ballots before Election Day, we would be able to handle jams in the machines and we would be able to speed up the Election Day process and still not release those results like we're doing now, no early results. I think it would benefit everybody. Election clerks are proposing a bill at the next legislature to allow earlier opening and counting of absentee ballots, which now make up more than 70 percent of votes cast. Stapleton, however, says he's concerned about the security of any early vote counts. If Montanans knew on Monday before the election who was leading in a major election, I think that would compromise the entire election process. Local election officials say other states do early counting and security isn't a problem. They also say that given Montana's multiple ways of voting and vote counting and broad geography, it may no longer be realistic to expect results a few hours after polls close. Every election day when you come to work, you always hope you've got the general results done by one in the morning. Never happens, but it's always your hope. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Montana had an extremely high midterm election turnout of 71 percent with 509,000 votes cast. Uh, in other news this morning, Butte and Anaconda will have to wait a bit longer for the finalized consent decree detailing Superfund cleanup. The signed decree was expected to be released before the end of the year, but the Environmental Protection Agency needs more time to add recommendations and comments from several public meetings held in the two cities to the final report. Report details several cleanup projects from more than a century's worth of mining contamination in both Butte and Anaconda. Local Superfund officials say it will be worth the wait. Uh, it, it's really good news. It's, it's disappointing that things take longer than we expect, but uh, they're just going to be that much more complete and thorough, and uh, it'll, it'll expedite our review uh, of those documents. By the way, once released, the decree will be reviewed, and the Butte Council of Commissioners will vote on whether to approve the final decree, which is expected to be released in early 2019. And Fort Peck tribal leaders say they don't expect to see Yellowstone bison sent to their reservation before the end of the year. MTN's John Shearer reports from Yellowstone National Park. For decades, Yellowstone has struggled with how to control its bison population. Some are killed by state and tribal hunters every winter as they try to leave the park in search of food. But hundreds of others are captured and sent to slaughter. This has led tribal officials and even former Montana Governor Brian Schweitzer to attempt to relocate some of the animals to Fort Peck tribal lands. We're very frustrated. The Fort Peck tribes have spent over a million dollars on this effort, um, and that's their demonstrated commitment to preserving Yellowstone bison for the genetics. Yellowstone bison are some of the only bison in the world known to have pure genetic lineage to the historic bison that once roamed the North American plains by the millions. There is a stone wall um, to get live bison out of the park and two tribes. At a meeting of the Interagency Bison Management Plan partners, Mike Honeycutt, the chief executive of the Montana Department of Livestock said the state is eager to set up a pipeline to move bison from the park to the tribes, but it wants to make sure all federal requirements are met. Tribal officials claim those requirements keep changing. We've heard from some local sources that those animals have been in quarantine long enough that they can be certified disease free by the state of Montana and allowed to enter the state legally. But we're hearing from Washington, D.C. that um, they need additional testing. And they're really handling this out of Washington, D.C. Ryan Clark with the Federal Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service says there is little communication he gets from his superiors in Washington where the final decisions on moving the animals will be made. The actual maintenance of those animals in a separate pasture completely away from the rest of the herd would be costly. State and federal officials say the concern is that the bison could transmit brucellosis to cattle that causes fetuses to abort. APHIS says that in Wyoming and North Dakota, bison have been known to transmit the disease to cattle. But in the greater Yellowstone area, only elk have been known to share that disease with cattle herds. In Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Now both APHIS and National Park facilities built to hold the bison quarantine are filled to capacity. That means if bison wander out of the park and search for food this winter, they will have to be sent to slaughter since there's nowhere to house them. 
Uh, in other news, as we know, living in Montana, we see wildlife almost daily. Well, if you come across one in the middle of the road while you're driving, Montana Highway Patrol says it's not the best idea to swerve. Rather than swerving, it's best to slow down as much as possible. HP says they see crashes involving wildlife five days out of the week. Um, a lot of people tend to, tend to try to swerve to miss wildlife, and when they do, it ends up being a much worse crash, being rollovers or involving other parties. Now, if you happen to uh, hit any wildlife, stay in your vehicle, call the Montana Highway Patrol or your local law enforcement. So just be on the lookout. Some good Head tips. on a swivel, for sure. Good tips. Taking a quick break, when we return, CBS's Kenneth Craig compares headlights in various vehicles, seeing which ones are leaving you in the dark. But first, let's check in with Nora O'Donnell, see what they're working on at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, we'll look at the political risks of President Trump leaving open the possibility of a pardon for Paul Manafort. This as the Russia investigation nears an apparent end. Also, a new report says the gender pay gap is worse than previously thought. Jill Schlesinger is here with what women and companies can do to even the playing field. And country music legend Garth Brooks right here in Studio 57.